former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Ulumide Akpata, has now been declared winner in the Labour Party governorship primary in Edo State. He's clinched the ticket for the September 20, 2024 governorship election in the state. Mr. Akpata scored 316 votes to defeat his opponent in an exercise held in Benin City, the Edo State capital, earlier today. The Deputy Governor of Abia said, Mr. Ikechuku Emeta declared Mr. Akpata the winner of the election. This is the moment where Mr. Ulumide Akpata was declared winner of the race. By the powers vested on me by the National Working Committee and the National Executive Council of the Labour Party, I hereby declare as follows. Mr. Olumide Osiabovo Akpata, having scored the highest number of votes and certified the provisions of the constitution of the party, is hereby declared the winner and the gubernatorial candidate of the Labour Party for the Edo State Governorship election. All right, that was a moment when Mr. Olumide Akpata was declared winner tonight. Let's speak with the man uh, who's won the race. Uh, he's joined us live from Benin City, Mr. Olumide Akpata, the Edo Labour Party Governorship candidate. Thank you so much. Mr. Akpata for joining us tonight and congratulations on your victory. Thank you, Shayo. Thank you so much for having me. And I believe you because you spoke with a lot of confidence the last time you were on this program, perhaps underrated, perhaps looked down upon as an outsider in the political scene in Edo State, but you've proven everyone wrong today that you are capable of clinching the ticket. Perhaps the thinking was that you are up against some uh, politicians who have uh, been in the, in the system for far too long. So there are a lot of people who thought that you might not be able to get it. But how do you feel? Now, how does it feel to be the winner? <clears throat> it feels really good, Shion. And it's not, there, were not, there were a lot of people, including you, Shion, who did not think I could do it. You remember we talked about it the other day, and I told you that I would do it. Um, you know, uh, the most powerful thing in the world is to be underestimated. And, uh, and um, what we have done is to show those who say that they are the professional politicians that it is really not about... Uh, uh, I, I, told you this, uh, I told you this the other day, that uh, the age of uh, Solomon has nothing to do with the wisdom of Methuselah. They are, there are just certain principles that run across that run across uh, different um, different aspects of life. Uh, politics is no different. If you apply certain principles, you will achieve success. And if you're focused, and if you if you know exactly what you want to do, and I think uh, I think those are things. Uh, those are qualities that I I I seem to I seem to have and uh, been able to apply to this particular undertaking. Well, how does it feel? Now to be bearing the burden as a flag bearer of the Labour Party, what it, what does this mean to you? Heavy weight, heavy weight on my shoulders. Um, the Labour Party is uh, is the is that vehicle that I think has the potential to rescue Nigeria, um, um, and uh, it's a people centric party. Hence our, our logo, uh, which has the the family unit, Papa, Mama, Pekin, and. Um, the, the expectations are high on the part of the people because they have been uh, serially disappointed by the other actors uh, in, the, in the political space. And so they're looking up to the Labour Party, uh, they're looking up to those of us who are in the party to come to their rescue and provide succor, much needed succor, because um, I think we're at the brink of the precipice. I know this is... Uh, has almost become cliche, but really, really, Shion, I think we are at the very brink at this point. And it would take uh, a new party, a new perspective to pull us back and, uh, and uh, um, uh, course correct, as it were, because uh, things are not looking great at the moment. 
give us an idea. How did you beat the uh, professional politicians to their game? What did you do? <laughs> uh, that's my trade secret now, so I can't share that with you. Uh, otherwise, uh, I, what I was, you know, you know, I still have, you know, I still have uh, the main elections uh, to contend with in September. I can't, I can't be throwing everything on the table for you to share with the, my, you know, you know, the two other main parties have come up with their candidates. So we have to keep some things close to our chest. But uh, to answer your question, I, like I said, um, it's not rocket science. Um, we, we, um, I go to the people or I went to the people. Most of the old politicians still, they still, they still play by the old rule book. You know, you go to the kingmaker, you go to the, you go to the guy who is dishing out patronage or dishing out favors. So you go to him and you worship at his, as, as his or her feet in the hope that um, they will uh, give you what it is that you're looking for. Um, I, uh, I, uh, I decided that power belongs to the people and that is the truth. And uh, I really believe that. And so when I joined my party, I went to the people and I, and I said to, and I spoke to them and I, and I reached out to them and I worked with them. And what you saw today, uh, the, 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 uh, resounding, the resounding defeat of my opponents that you saw today was a function of the people speaking. Because I had, re I had um, what I say and what I do resonates with them. Because as far as I'm concerned, the problem with politics in Nigeria today, as I always say, is that people have been taken out of the equation. And, and, and it's such a low-hanging fruit. Once you, once the people recognize that you are about them and what and their interests, they will gravitate towards you and they will give you the support. There were 343 votes on offer today at our primaries, and I got 316. Uh, I think that, uh, as we say in law, arrest uh, ipsa locutor. The, the facts speak for themselves. Uh, the people are tired of the old same, the same old, same old, tired of the, as you like to call them, uh, you know, the professional politicians, you know, the masters of the game. One thing the people have recognized is that those people do not have the interest of the average man at heart. They are there for personal interest. They are there because they play the game. They are not interested in actually the people who, are, who really are supposed to be the beneficiaries of uh, government and governance. So, low hanging fruit, and the people were happy with me at the Labour Party, and um, they, this, this, they, they said that they, 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 they demonstrated that resoundingly today. But what about this story that uh, you also doled out some money to delegates? How much did you give them? Um, well, please, rumors, rumors, rumor mongering, part of politics. I, uh, I, the only thing I remember giving to my uh, party uh, constituents or my party members was at Christmas when I, I put together Christmas hampers, uh, which I shared around the country, around the state. Uh, in, this, in, the, in, the, in the spirit of the season, I went around and I gave them um, car, uh, what's it called? Christmas hampers. And then also because of the fact that the Labour Party in Edo State uh, and the Labour Party in general um, is not as resourced as the other parties, I, 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 I donated cars to the, uh, to the party at the, the local government level. So yes, if you say, have I contributed to the building of my party? Definitely, I think everybody should contribute to the building of their parties. So, but uh, doling out of cash, no, that, that's not me. I rather I would rather speak to the people and convince them uh, that I am the better candidate, and, and they they agreed with me today. Because I mean, beating the likes of Rice Man, who this is not his first time of wanting to be governor of Edo State, that those who imagine that there must be something that is done that is beyond what the eyes can see that could have uh, helped Olumide Akwata clinch the ticket. Well, I don't know. I don't want to speak to. Um, I mean, all of the contestants, co-contestants. I, I'm really, I was, I'm really uh, grateful for the opportunity to have uh, slugged it out with them. I, I learned a few things from each and every one of them. Um, um, Rice Man or uh, or uh, Sergio Ogun's or 
uh, all of whom I know very well. I mean, we all have our different strategies. Uh, well, well, like you say, he has been at the game for a long time. Maybe he should change his strategy. I don't know, but uh, um, I definitely, I definitely, um, I don't know that there's anything that he did to help me. I think I, I came to the table clear-eyed, uh, clear-minded about what I thought were the things that would resonate with the people, and these are the things that I uh, put on the table. And uh, as the records will show, the results have shown today. The people agree with me, and uh, I am I'm gratified, extremely so. Uh, this was Olumide uh, Akpata, uh, who uh, raised an eyebrow, who raised the dust over the lack of preparedness of the party to conduct the primaries. Uh, there are those who say, uh, maybe you feared you, ca you could lose. That's why you, you screamed through the roofs at a time, and you went to town to say, to write to INEC, and uh, you wonder about your part party lack of preparedness. But you, here you are today, you are reaping the benefit of the party's process. What could have gone wrong then? Uh, on the contrary, I think I should be thanked for writing that letter to INEC. I think I should be commended. Because you know what you find in situations like this, there's this conspiracy of silence and nobody wants to bail the card. Nobody wants to tell the king that he's walking around naked. What do you find, what I found in my party at that point in time was that there was, a, <coughs> it did not appear that we were doing all that we needed to do to conduct the exercise. Uh, at that time, we were getting ready for the world congresses, which were to be held in 192 wards across the state. And I just saw what was a very, very disturbing lack of preparedness. And uh, I wrote to INEC, the regulator, INEC that is very concerned about internal party democracy, because I thought that would be that was the best thing to do to put my to put those who were superintending the process on their toes. Because I, I mean, I mean, what was clear to me was that um, everybody would have been a loser, uh, or at least I would have been a loser if I did or did not cry out or did not speak up and uh, and, and, and it, it yielded results i mean uh, very quickly the party released the the addresses of all 192 world secretariats where the world congresses were to be held very quickly the party called all, all of us aspirants to a meeting to brief us on what was to transpire at the world congresses all of this had not been done before i wrote my letter so i think my letter uh, helped to facilitate the process, helped to ensure that uh, we had a better managed, better organized process, out of which I have now emerged the uh, winner of the primary. So I am a beneficiary of my own advocacy, which is not such a bad thing, but I think everybody else benefited uh, because it was a much better process than I think it would have been if I had not written the letter. You've been two time lucky now, say, I mean, uh, Im I'm imagining uh, from your professional duties uh, trying to get into the public fray. Um, two time lucky as an outsider. Outsider, outside of uh, the inner bar, you broke the rules to become the NBA president. Outsider in Nigeria's politics, you broke the rules to clinch the Labour Party ticket. But in all of this, 51-year-old Olumide Akpata wanted to become a Edo State governor. What exactly is the vision here? Well, I don't know. Is it luck? Sure, I'm not so sure if it's luck. Uh, but, well, let's see. Let's see. Time will tell whether or not it is luck or whether or not it is that I, I, um, I think I have my finger on the buzzer when it comes to these things. Uh, I think... I know how to uh, engage the process, engage the system. Um, what am I bringing to the table? I don't say what is new or what, what, what is the idea here. Um, like I said to you the last time I was on your program, uh, government is not rocket science, it's management, it's administration. Um, it's prioritizing what the people, uh, for me, I mentioned to you before and I, I never get tired of saying it, we must put the people at the center of our policies, of our budgeting, of our prioritizing. So I, and I think um, I would be focusing on the people and what, what is in, most important to the largest number of the people of a dual state. So uh, agriculture, um, healthcare, uh, infrastructure, 
those are the things I will look at. And and you might say that these are stuff or these are things that everybody else talks about. But I think most people, at least those who I, I, I observe, seem to walk the talk to talk. I want to walk the talk. I, the people are crying for government to be relevant to them. The people are crying to feel the impact and the effect of government. So I'm about the people. So uh, you're going to find uh, uh, when Labour Party does uh, win the elections in September this year and I become governor, uh, you will find that the people will be right at the center and the people will be uh, the reason why we're in office. We will, we will deal with the issues that, have the, uh, that, that are actually important to the people, the, the family budget, uh, um, the woman who sells, uh, in, uh, who sells Gary, uh, in, in the urban market, or, or or the guy who who plies, who drives uh, Sienna um, from uh, Benin to Auchi every day, trying to trying to make ends meet. Meanwhile, the roads are so bad that he can't even make one trip. Those are the things that I will be focusing on. Um, I don't think I don't think we need anything, any uh, big words or big programs or big uh, high faluting. Uh, um, you know, ventures that seem to be the fad with most of our governments of the day. I just think we should return to the basics and find out what the people want and govern in that direction, run government in that direction, because it's about the people. Um, that's it, Sean. That's, that's what I'm going to be doing. Mm. Now, I, and I really I do think that what is needed in Nigeria today is the federating unit being able to identify and typify their regions and their territory in such a way that they might be identified for something. They might be known for something. The rest of the world and the countries of the world are being identified for something, to stand for something economically and contribute to the rest of the world. Should you become the governor of Edo State, what exactly would you like Edo State to be identified for? Well, I think one of the things that it, it, it strikes me that we could easily be uh, a food basket of the nation. We're a largely agrarian state. It strikes me that if we, if government focuses on agriculture, there's quite a bit that we can do uh, to make sure that one that we get agriculture going, and in that way, you 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 help to increase employment. You help the family, the budget of the average farmer, but then more importantly, you feed your people. And so, considering how fertile. Uh, um, the, the soil is or the land is in Edo, I think government should do a bit more. Um, firstly, I, I mentioned to you, uh, I may have mentioned in your program, government has to look at agriculture as almost a social service or it's, it's, it's inroad into, it's, it's foreign into agriculture, almost a social service. Government has to be an off-taker. Government has to buy the produce of the farmers. Government has to do more in terms of um, um, making more use of the land, that the, the lots of land that we have in the state, turning turning agriculture into a, a, a job creating sector um, in a in a do state. Um, what else do you want a do state to be known for? You know that we're the hub. You know that we right we sit right at the middle of uh, of. Um, of um, uh, the east and the west, western part, oh, sorry, the west and the northern parts of Nigeria. We, we really should take advantage of that and uh, promote uh, uh, more of a, more tourism. Uh, we are known for culture, so we should be uh, making the state a cultural capital. But um, um, I would also think that um, we should uh, look also at our human resource. Um, one thing that uh, our people are known for is their ingenuity, their innovativeness. Um, I think we must focus on our youth and notice and uh, do more with regard to giving them outlets for to uh, express themselves and their talent. All right. And not every and not every child will go not every child will go to university. Mm -hmm. uh, so we must do more for our vocational education. All right. There's a whole lot to talk about, Shane, but maybe, maybe yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I'd like us to close the program quickly, but in 30 seconds, if you may, um, it's this uh, situation in your party relating to appropriation of funds and the utilization of party funds. How embarrassing is this? And is this the kind of thing you hope to be identified with when people are accusing each other about embezzlement, misappropriation of funds, and pointing accusing fingers? For someone who was being an MBA president, how embarrassing is this for you? And are you, can you live with it? 
in 30 seconds, Mr. Akpata. Well, I'm not so sure I agree with this tiring everybody with the same brush. Um, if, my, if my memory serves me right, it is one individual who has been accused of uh, certain infractions, right? Uh, I, I hesitate to speak to the issue because I'm aware that this is now a subject matter of a court action and so it's sub judice, so I have to be careful about this. But um, everybody just jumps and says, oh, wow, Labour Party is horrible, or Labour Party did this. No. An individual is accused of, uh, of, uh, of wrongdoing. He, I mean, he has the right to defend himself, as I'm sure he will. Um, he who alleges or she who alleges must prove. I am sure that um, now that the treasurer of the Nigeria, of, I'm sorry, of the Labour Party has proceeded to, um, I'm, as I'm aware, sue uh, 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 the, uh, has gone to court, as it were. Um, maybe, maybe more of these issues will come to light. Right. But I'm just not so, e I'm not so eager, Sheung, and I think I'm not so sure it's fair to just brand the entire Labour Party as being a being corrupt because one individual has been so accused. Mr. Olumide Akpata, I know it's been some very horrific days for you trying to get the delegates to vote in your favor. Now you've got it. I think you need some rest. But as soon as the campaign starts, try to get into the studio and let's have some conversation about getting Edo working. Thank you so much indeed. Olumide Akpata, did I forget that one? Olumide Akpata. <laughs> Labour Party governorship candidate. Thank you so much indeed for your time and congratulations. Sure thing. Thank you, Sean. You have a good evening. You too.